in this presentation we're going to look at Windows API implementation so we're going to see a typical API and analyze how that particular API is implemented What APIs do? When I say API, I mean Windows API or practically any API for that matter. So APIs are application program interfaces or simply functions. So like any other functions, they change data structures, internal data structures, read, write, modify or delete those data structures or fields of those data structures control a read or write to devices that is another thing which is being done by APIs also some of them implement some algorithms or logic etc so APIs are not different from any other functions in in that particular respect it's just that it is library in, in case of Windows API it is a library which is provided by Microsoft for the operating system. So let's see a simple example related to process as this presentation is part of the process series. In this case, I'm taking the example of get command line. There is no particular reason why I have chosen this particular API. Um, one thing is that the implementation is pretty simple. It is very easy to explain the concept I'm trying to drive here. So if you look at the MSDN documentation of get command line, we can see that it uh, retrieves the command line string for the current process. Well, this is a typical interface documentation of an API from MSDN. This doesn't tell you what it does. So that is the, that is one of the problem with MSDN documentation with any API for that matter. This is just a typical example. I try to refer this kind of documentation as interface documentation. Now let's see the implementation part a little bit. So what it exactly does. So what git command line does is it is giving a pointer to one of the fields in the PEB or process environment block which is normally contained the command line passed from the parent. This is filled by NTDLO as part of the PEB setup in the process startup. Command line argument is one of the things which are passed, one of the arguments which are passed to create process and the loader, the NTDLO, with the help of kernel it gets that particular argument from create process and populate one of the fields in the PEB which we're gonna see shortly with the command line argument. So here we have a very simple application which uses get command line. All it is doing is just getting the command line and it is doing a print right here. So very, very simple application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and debug this. So from WinDebug, I'm going to open the same executable. So this is the executable which we obtained from that particular program which we saw in Visual Studio. So I have given a command line here. Um, this is the command line which I'm giving to this particular process. So test CMD given in debug. You can give anything pretty much for this exercise. So I can see that uh, same program on my left side. And in the right side, it is the command window of in debug. 
if you are not familiar with what I am doing, please go ahead and uh, visit my WinDebug series. I am going to press F10 so that I will get into this while loop and going to execute the a loop once it's an infinite loop so let's see what we have printed so I have printed the command line um, so the the first command line to any process is the name of the process itself so this is where the process absolute path in this computer right now the next couple of strings are the strings which we have which we have given in the WinDebug test CMD given in WinDebug. So this is a command line. So this is this complete string is a command line. So that is what we are getting from get command line. Now I'm going to continue this loop. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. F9, I have a breakpoint just before executing. There's, I'm going to go with a G. So now the process is running. Still, it's waiting on get CH. So I hit my breakpoint. So ideally, we should get the same result because it's the same call which we're going to execute. The command line is not going to change. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F10. Now, if I do a DU on the pointer test, I'll get a command line again. So if you look at this is the address which this, this is starting. So let's see um, DT test. So pretty much the same same output we are getting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bank pep. So if you look at the pep, you can see pretty much the same thing. So bank pep gives a user friendly version of the pep but that's not what we want here so we need we need the actual pep so for that what we're going to do is we're going to take this pep address and dt slash r nt bank underscore pb and the address so this will dump out the peb in the raw format in the actual memory layout so if you go a little bit up here we can see that the command line is right there so it is nothing but the 40th offset and the buffer we are seeing here this particular address this buffer is nothing but 44th offset pretty much and in hex so let's see, um, let's give a search for this, control F. So if I go up, you can see that it is the same value as test. So um, in short, what get command line is returning? Get command line is returning nothing but this particular address which we are seeing here this particular address which is a buffer it's, it's a unique odd string at the end of the day the command line is a unique odd string um, probably in some later presentation we will see what is a unique odd string um, but this is a form of string uh, which is used in Windows kernel and NTDLL very frequently So long story short, uh, so this is a buffer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this buffer manually. So again, uh, 
another command which we discussed eu edit unicode then the address then whatever I want test I'm putting a couple of spaces here so that we know the difference now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the command line again I'm going to press F10 so as you can see here so the command line has changed the output has changed whatever we have edited in the memory it is taking as command line now from the from the process standpoint the command line has changed although the actual command line remains the same so in short command line is nothing but a field in tab so coming back to slides and coming to summary so we have seen the working of git command line what is more important is the general concept of implementation of APIs in many cases to understand and more often to effectively use Windows API or any library for that matter as I was mentioning before we need to translate the MSDN documentation which is the interface documentation in many cases to changes to data structures and other internal things it does if you ask me what is Windows internals this is my answer in one single sentence understanding the implementation of different APIs we use kernel or user that's about the presentation now reviews comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location so if you don't mind I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments unfortunately it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content now if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training please feel free to follow these links also please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings all services are available online as well as direct classroom training so that's it thank you for watching see you next time